Good afternoon, Pranam Da. I'm Ashling May, the Data Manager of Covnod, and together with my colleague Catherine Moss, we're going to take you on a whistle-stop tour of Covnod's database this afternoon with the aim of convincing you that Covenant's data is more exciting than you think. I'm just going to share my screen with you and switch over to PowerPoint here. Um, <clears throat> firstly, I'd like to introduce you to the data management team. So as well as Catherine and myself, we have Jen Vidal on the right here. And the three of us um, have worked at Covenant for quite some time. I'm sure you'll have heard from one or other of us at some point in the past, perhaps thanking you for data you've sent in or asking you for some more details, or perhaps reminding you that you might have some more records to send in. Um, we uh, have got used to over the last six months to communicating with each other via Zoom, email, WhatsApp, you name it, but not actually seeing We have Richard, um, who is shown here rescuing a bee swarm, I believe, and as well as his day-to-day -day work, he occasionally helps us out with data processing and quality checking. And also Tim May, uh, who's the IT manager and system developer with Covnod, is occasionally called in to um, update data behind the scenes. And he's currently writing a new version of our online recording system and also our more internal local record centre management system, ORCA. And we're eagerly awaiting this as it will give us more data management tools within our data management team. So how do we make sense of the data? Four and a quarter million records. This has grown steadily over the last 14 years, which is all thanks to you and other recorders across, across North Wales submitting records to us. And Although we could tell you when each individual record had been entered or imported and who had sent it in to us, etc., it's quite difficult to keep track of the overall picture with this many records involved. And how do we answer questions such as how up to date is the data we hold? Which species groups are well represented? Where are the recording hotspots across North Wales, etc.? It's very hard to visualise four and a quarter million records. This is just one attempt to do so. Um, which is an uh, alternative to the traditional list type of, of um, summaries of, of a set of data, where the larger words are referring to the species with more records. I mean, Welsh, Mwyachin, Blackbird, Robin Gogh, Darren To'o, Gantus, as major contributors to the Covenant database. Now, um, Power BI, um, a year or so ago, Roy suggested experimenting with this, uh, which is a business analytics service by Microsoft. So in itself, it doesn't sound very promising, but it is starting to be used um, to look at biological records, for example, by Natural Resources Wales. And the diagrams that um, you can see, the Welsh and the English one I've shown you, in fact, were generated in Power BI. Um, Initially, Catherine was tasked with investigating just how the data we hold could be analysed using Power BI. She's done a great job with this and also enabled me to learn from her experience. And we have lots more to discover about certain aspects of this software. It can be frustrating at times getting it to do what you want it to do, but it's already been incredibly useful in understanding Covenant's data holdings. We'd like to share some of what we've learned with you today. So I'm now going to open up a Power BI file that we've put together. So this is the Power BI file that we'll be looking at this afternoon. Uh, the first page of it is really just a summary um, showing us the total number of records held in the database currently. Um, that will include some data that's not yet live you know, used in reporting purposes because it might need checking by, for example, counter recorders that um, put a great deal of time and effort into checking uh, records that Covenant hold, um, verifying them. The table on the bottom left gives detailed information about the taxonomic rank at which the various records are recorded. 
So we can see that 93% are recorded to species level or similar. Um, so that's good to know. The chart on the right tells us about um, how the total number of records we hold in the database has changed over time. Now the line relates to totals that have been included in annual reports um, that Covenant have produced and the columns uh, then um, um, actually draw on existing records in the Covenant database and what their um, import or entry date is because some records will be imported from spreadsheets and some will be entered directly onto the ORS. So the turquoise colouring there refers to records entered directly onto the ORS. So you'll see straight away that the um, columns don't match the, the line, but that's because um, especially for the older records, um, they, certain data sets will have been removed from the database and a new version imported. So that's why they don't entirely match the further back you go. But it gives you quite a good in, uh, general picture of, of the data we hold. Uh, we have another page here which uh, refers to data sources, um, which is also quite interesting. And um, this is giving us some information about where the data in our database comes from, with 32% here coming from national recording schemes or societies. Again, about 30% from country recorders, 17% from government agencies, mostly NRW, 6% from local conservation or recording groups, such as perhaps the North Wales Wildlife Trust. Uh, Another chunk of 6% there from other individual recorders or other organisations. Um, we've also got local government organisations such as the local authorities. 2% from other local environmental record centres where records might be passed, for example, to record in Cheshire and they share the records back with us and we do the same with them. Uh, we've got national conservation organisations there iRecord data, um, we've got consultancy data, only 0.39%. And um, yeah, that's that's the, the broad categories there. But we might want to find out a bit more about some of these categories. For example, we might want to know what proportion of the data in those particular sections of the database comes via the MBN Atlas, because the MBN Atlas holds a huge number of more national data sets and quite a number of those data sets we can download and have a copy of in our database. And um, so if I was to click on the 32% belonging to the national recording schemes, you'll see up the top right that um, 254,000 plus of the records there come via the MBN Alice. Um, Whereas, for example, if you looked at the 31% from the county recorders, none of that comes from the MBN Atlas. Um, another thing we might like to do is to see what data sets actually make up these different chunks. So, for example, if I thought, um, if I wanted to look at the data belonging to the um, consultants, yeah, click on that little segment, and then I'll open up this table at the bottom. And it's got the details of all the um, data sets that are relevant to that um, data source. And I can scroll down and it tells me how many records are included on the right as well. So you can see there's quite a lot of data sets, but not a great deal of records in each of them. And I guess that's kind of the nature of, um, of some of the consultancy data we hold, where the consultancies might only be doing some of their surveys really in the Covenant area. And go back to the overall report and move on to another question which is how up to date is the data we hold so this page shows us the um the number of records we hold per year that the records were recorded um, um we can see that in terms of 2020 records there's quite a, a huge drop down there, but that really relates to the, the time lag that exists in that we would often not get quite a lot of our 2020 data until 2021 or even later because it might be being collated by a country recorder first or a national scheme or society. So um, the picture does vary depending on what 
species group you're looking at. So if I was to click on birds here, that would change my graph on the left. And we could see that there were several peaks here. Now, the first one uh, in 2009, that relates to when data was collated for the breeding bird atlas of North Wales, which was five years around that date. And then there's another peak in 2016 and, and looking at the data I, I can tell that that's because that's the year that we have the most recent bird track data set for the whole of North Wales so that's what that's showing there. Mammals, if I click on that option it, it shows us a similar picture really and the peak around 2006 relates to the Snowdonia Mammal Atlas. Um, the peak in 2019 I think will relate to certain national data sets that we've um, obtained from the MBN Atlas. But then if we look at um, reptiles and amphibians, there's a complete contrast here um, and the increase really continues all the way up to the most recent year and that's because a lot of the reptile amphibian data we hold is entered directly onto the ORS and so it tends to be more entered more immediately rather than going through a collation by somebody else. So um, this is a useful way of keeping track, maybe checking which species groups are most in need of, of obtaining some updates from recorders. Now, um, <clears throat> Going back to birds, um, I thought it was useful to mention that although um, much of the bird data we hold is imported onto the Copland database and the numbers of records really are huge in comparison to some of the other groups like reptiles and amphibians. So we're looking at for 2019, 102,000 records. Um, so although a lot of this is imported, is actually being entered onto bird track by the original recorders. So this highlights an increasing use of online recording systems by individuals where people are putting on their own records onto an online system. And that is then maybe being shared with another body like ourselves in this case. Um, and many of you will have used the Covenant ORS, which was um, first put together in 2006 and was one of the first of these systems that was developed locally. Um, it's evolved hugely over time and we're looking forward to having a new version of it in 2021. Um, sometimes this proliferation of online recording systems can seem a little bewildering. Um, but the most important thing I suppose to know is that we're working behind the scenes to ensure that records are shared between these systems. So there shouldn't be a need for any recorder to put the records on in two systems. Um, <clears throat> so the final question I wanted to look at was, if you look at the last five years of data and, and that's been entered onto the ORS, how does 2020 compare? Because of course we can all anticipate that there would be quite a difference in the number of records made and also perhaps the distribution of those records. So on this final visual I'm going to show you, I have filtered down to only records entered in the year that they were made, so that we're not including any historic records that are every in Looking 2016 to 2020, on the top left I've got a list of the projects um, that are involved. So firstly I'm just going to click on the ad hoc ORS data which is any records that people have entered using the standard ORS data entry form. And the chart down the bottom right shows that actually 2020 is looking quite positive in number of records entered if you look in comparison with previous years. However, if I go back to my selection of projects on the left here and I look at Wales GCN monitoring, the second one in the list, you'll see a decrease and looking at a few of the other monitoring projects as I scroll down the list here, uh, the North Wales Dormouse project, similar picture, the um, Black Grouse monitoring, nothing recorded yet for 2019 on our database at least, uh, Sand Lizard monitoring, similar, uh, and Nasha Jack Toad finally. So in terms of monitoring project, going, going by the data that we hold on our database so far, it's looking like these just didn't happen 
as we would expect in 2020 to the same extent. Um, and it'll be interesting over time to look at um, the data we hold um, because the data that comes into us via spreadsheet, of course, we'll have to wait a few years until we're up to date with that in terms of 2020 records. But if you looked at it spatially, I would guess that most of the records for a certain period of time were centred on gardens rather than the usual places that people go to record. But that'll be an interesting question to look at over the next few years. I'm going to pass over now to Catherine, who's going to tell us a bit more about certain aspects of the Covenod data. I'm Catherine. I work with Ashley at Covenod and I'm now showing you biological recording in North Wales as represented by our database in terms of species groups. The chart on the left shows that birds make up just over a third of our records at over 1.4 million records. We have a similar number of invertebrate records and then plants are in third place, making up just over one fifth of the database. We have smaller numbers of mammals, fungi, lichen, amphibians, reptiles, fish and other species these being microscopic organisms. These numbers reflect a few different things. One is the recording effort, and another is the number of species in a species group. The table on the right shows the number of taxa in each species group. That is the number of species and subspecies that we have records for. A bit of a rough and ready figure due to the variation in recording of subspecies, but it's good enough for a quick comparison. We also have the mean number of records per taxa, which gives us a rough figure for the recording effort as captured by the Covenod database. And from this, we can see that for birds, we have 470 taxa there and over 3,000 records per taxa, a very high level of recording effort. But for invertebrates, on the other hand, which is a more diverse species group with over 12,000 taxa there in the database, we have only 115 records per taxa on average. Looking in more detail now at the invertebrates, we can see that moths are the top recorded species due partly to the large number of taxa. This is followed by butterflies with fewer species although we have a surprising number of subspecies there in the database, but they're very well recorded with an average of over 3,000 records per taxa. If I sort on this column here, uh, we can also see that dragonflies, although having fewer records in the database, are also fairly well recorded with over a thousand species per taxa there. If I sort again on the number of records that we have, we can see that in third place we have the Diptera, uh, another diverse species group with over 3,000 taxa, but not so well recorded. A similar picture there for the beetles. Moving on to plants now, vascular plants make up 80% of the plants that we have in the database, with bryophytes a little bit less well recorded with only 17%, and then some algae and stonework there. Mammals are another well recorded group with over a thousand records per taxa. And bats being the most well recorded there, the number of bat species. The numbers here, number of records, reflect a few things. Recording efforts with regards to protected species, such as bats, squirrels and dormice. The efforts that recorders make to get their data onto our database and also our own efforts to capture the data and make it available for use by decision makers. Looking now at fungi and lichen, a little bit of a different picture there. 
These are very diverse species groups, but not particularly well recorded. We have more lichen records than fungi records, and that's a reflection of the fact that we have data from the British Lichen Society, but we don't have data from the British Mycological Society. Amphibians and reptiles. The numbers suggest that these are very well recorded, and the Greater Crested Newt Monitoring Project, coordinated by NRW, makes a significant contribution to these numbers. And lastly, fish, not particularly well recorded, as I remember Hugh Jones mentioning at last year's conference. I'm now going to move on to look at the records by Covnod category. Covnod divides species up according to the legal protection or other status that they have received into four different groups. Category one records have European or UK legal protection and also include Section 7 species and UK LBAP species. These make up 15% of the database and nearly 600,000 records. 10% of our records are Category 2 species. These are species on the Global Red List, British Red Data Book, Nationally Rare and Scare Species, Welsh Red and Welsh Red and Amber Bird Species, and vascular, Welsh Vascular Plant Red Data List Species. Birds keep coming to the top over here due to the large number of bird records in the database. Category 3 species, 19% there. These are LBAP species and locally important species as specified by local experts. <coughs> they include a large number of plant and fungi species. Lastly, category 4 represents all the other species in our database. Now I'm going to talk about record distribution in North Wales. This is a map of record density. It shows the number of records per kilometre square. It's intended just to focus on the terrestrial area of North Wales, though it has included some sandbanks and the like. The darker areas of the map that is the black and dark brown areas, are the squares with the highest number of records. Whilst the paler and yellow squares indicate few records, the green dots indicate areas with no records. Looking firstly at the areas with darker colouring, we can see that Flintshire is particularly well recorded, as are many coastal areas and nature reserves. You can see there Newborough, the Great Warm, South Stack, places like that. In terms of the individual squares, the square with the most records is RSPB Conway. In second place, we have Redumwen, then Kemlin, and in fourth place, the home patch of one of our top recorders on Anglesey. If we look instead at the squares that have been best recorded in terms of the number of taxa, top square is here in Marianasha, the home patch of another one of our top recorders. In second place, we have Jaborth, then Osadrainyog. Korsgoch and Abergwyn Dragon Nature Reserve. I want to now turn to look at the areas with the fewest records. These are often areas that are difficult to access, such as the mountains, and also areas with less recording interest, such as more intensively farmed areas. You can see that there's quite a lot of Denver showing there, and parts of Marianas show in Gwynedd. In August 2019, we started the initiative Monad of the Month. Every month we highlighted on our website a few squares that had few or no records, in an attempt to get recorders to go out and record there. 
We postponed this at the start of lockdown, but we're hoping to return, resume again in the spring. We would like to put a map like this on our website so that recorders are able to choose where to record. And we would also like to provide information about the coverage of different species groups, as that could be quite helpful to you. That's all I really have to say. Thank you very much for listening. And I'd like now to hand you back to Ashley. Thank you, Catherine. Three final points then to take away from our presentation today. Look at the Covenant data report we've produced if you're interested in what we've um, touched on today. Please get in touch if you have any questions you'd like us to investigate about Covenant's data holdings. And don't forget to submit your records. Thank you very much, Diolch Am Grando.